So what is a chi-square distribution? And then we'll look at some examples. So if you have a random variable x, which is Gaussian distributed with zero mean and standard deviation one, then x squared is going to have a chi-square distribution. So that's the definition of the chi-square. Okay, so here's a Gaussian distribution uh, density function, and we're going to uh, just uh, want to get an intuitive understanding of this chi-squared. Uh, so what we see is that, of course, the Gaussian has negative values for x and positive, but chi the square of x, of course, can only be positive. So the uh, probability that exists on the left-hand side uh, of this picture here, of this drawing here, is going to be added to the probability on the right-hand side because the probability for x, for x squared, that being 1, that could come about because x was 1 or x was minus 1. So it's the, essentially it's the addition of these two probabilities at 1. And for other values, uh, of course, you've got to take the square of, into account. Uh, um, of course, you did for the 1, but 1 squared equals 1. Um, so if it's, if it's bigger than 1 here, then it's going to be taking the value and putting it even further to the right. So 2, for example, x equals 2, uh, you add those two probabilities, but you've got to put that here at 4 because 2 squared is 4. Okay, so the picture here, the curve here is going to be spread out uh, to the right, and and it's going to be uh, also uh, uh, modified, of course, on the left-hand side here. So these probabilities here, uh, are because it's not just 0 0.5, of course, 0 0.5 squared is 0.25. Okay, so the it, what what is it, the probabilities that are here at 0 0.5 are going to appear on x squared at 0.25. Okay, which is closer to the origin. So these values here are going to be moved in uh, and therefore it's going to be appearing closer to the, the origin. So that hopefully explains the shape of this curve. So what about some more general versions of chi-square? Well, it's not just squaring a single Gaussian. If you add up the summation of squares, so if you have different random variables, and you add the squares of those random variables, uh, and if you add the k, then this is distributed as chi-square as well. Uh, and we now say it's got a degree of freedom of k. So this one here had a degree of freedom of 1. Uh, this has a degree of freedom of k. And if we just think how that's going to be on this curve here, well, if k equal 2, you're adding two of these values together. So, of course, when you're adding two of them together, there's more chance of getting a bigger number. Uh, and so um, you're going to be getting uh, less chance of getting a small number uh, and higher chance of getting a bigger number. So that's this curve here. So this is for k equals 1, and then k equals 2 is going to look like this here. And k equals 3, this this value comes down and it turns out k equals 3 even looks like this and then uh, it comes over the top like this. So this is k equals 3 here. So the more of these random variables that you add together when you're, when you're adding the squares, sorry, um, the, but the more of them that you're adding, uh, obviously the more that the density function moves to the right. Uh, and so the chi-square, it's now you get a family of curves for different degrees of freedom, which comes about from the different numbers that you, of the terms that you're adding together, whether you're adding two or three or four terms together. Uh, and another uh, important thing to know about is another property of it uh, that's important is that if you have a random variable that's a chi-square uh, random variable with a degree of freedom k1, for example, and if you had another one which was chi-square uh, with degree of freedom k2, uh, then if you add those together, y1 plus y2, if you had another random variable, which is the addition of those two random variables, then that was also chi-squared with a degree of freedom k1 plus k2. Uh, and so again, this one does make sense because uh, this, if, this is, uh, if this random variable is made up of a sum of, of Gaussians, the sum of squares of Gaussians, uh, and this one is also the sum of squares of Gaussians. When you're adding them together, you, of course, the summation uh, from here and the summation from there can be put into a single summation with k1 plus k2 terms. And so if you, the important property, if you, if you have two random variables which are each chi-squared, then the summation of those two would also be chi-squared.
So let's look at uh, some examples here. Uh, in a communication system, we often look at the input plus noise, uh, the so-called additive white Gaussian noise channel. Uh, and we've got a video on, the, on, our, on this uh, YouTube channel for this. Uh, the noise here is, uh, of course, Gaussian. Uh, and there's a video on why the noise is Gaussian on the channel, if you're interested. Uh, of course, that means that the... So where does the chi-square come in? Well, that means that the power of this noise has a chi-square. So the power, this implies that the power is a chi-square distribution of, uh, in this case, if it's just a scalar of degree of freedom one. So in communication systems, we, we, we're interest, often dealing with Gaussian distributions for the voltages and chi-square distributions for the powers. Uh, it's not just the noise that is a Gaussian. Another example uh, is if you're wanting to maximize capacity, and there's again a video on the channel about capacity. Uh, if you're wanting to do that, then your input distribution is from a Gaussian uh, distribution. So uh, the input distribution is Gaussian. So again, the input data, if you were to be maximizing capacity, the input data would also have a chi-squared power. Um, the power is chi-squared. Uh, and of course here, because if you're adding two Gaussians together, you also get a Gaussian, then the measurement at the receiver would also be Gaussian and would also have a chi-squared power. So this is one example in communication systems where uh, we get the chi-square distribution appearing. Uh, another example is for channel values. And, and uh, if we have a Rayleigh faded channel, then you've got a, the, the channel gain. Uh, if you had a communications channel with a multiplier of H here, then the channel gain, if it was Rayleigh, then uh, it turns out that the power of the Rayleigh gain of the channel gain is, as we can see now, a chi-square distribution with two degrees of freedom. And why is it two degrees of freedom? Well, the Rayleigh gain, and again, there's a video on the channel about this uh, for more information, but that Rayleigh gain uh, can be modeled as a Gaussian in the real component uh, and a Gaussian in the imaginary component. And when we work out the amplitude of that, we've got the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared um, and then square rooted gives us that gain of the power, uh, the gain of the channel. So this is the formula for the gain of the channel. So if you take the square of that and you look at the power of the channel, then it takes off the square, cancels the square root, and you're left with uh, HR squared plus HI squared. Each of those was Gaussian. You're now adding the squares of two Gaussians together. So you have a chi-square distribution with two degrees of freedom. So if you found this uh, video useful, please give it a thumbs up. It helps uh, others find the video on the channel uh, and uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the web link in the description below for more information.